the Seinfeld reunion season, I think I'm just so glad it exists because you didn't do the reunion, but you kind of did. Right. But the most fun part is just watching you and Jerry because that obviously wasn't on Seinfeld. Yeah. But, um, and then everything culminates in the Super Dave joke with, with you and Jerry, which... Every once in a while, it just becomes a social media viral clip again. <laughs> it just bounces what a around. Joke. I had no idea who was going to tell that. So you didn't know? Up. Absolutely not. Jerry Marty Funkhouse. Hey, Marty. How you doing? How you doing? Good. Want to hear a joke? Uh, he, uh, no, he doesn't want to really. hear a joke. We have a read through. Yeah, we got it. Let me just get right through it. Okay. A woman's very afraid of the size of her opening. What is she afraid of? The size of her opening. So she goes to her mother. She says, what am I going to do? I'm so big down there. When I marry Harry, he's going to divorce me. Her mother says, don't worry, sweetheart. It runs in the family. Do what I did when I married your father. Go to the market, get some raw liver, put it in there, and never know the difference. Oh, my God. So she does. They have eight hours of sex after their marriage. She wakes up at 10 o'clock. He's gone, but there's a note on her pillow. It says, my darling Harriet, to think that I waited a year to consummate our love relationship makes my heart beat so loudly. I'm surprised it didn't wake you up. The only reason I'm not here now, darling, is I'm at work to make enough money to buy you a house, a picket fence, we'll have dogs and children. Ah, oh, this is not so bad. Oh, yeah, this is great. Will you finish the fucking joke already? When the five o'clock dinner bell rings, I will be home like the winged gossamer of your love in your arms, your loving husband, oh, Harry. that's nice. P.S. Your cunt is in the sink. <laughs> okay, you told your joke. Let's go. How good is that? It surprised me. That's it surprised me. I had no idea it would yeah, be that revolting. Funny. Ladies and gentlemen, please hold the work. Let's take our places for the table read. Okay, let's sit at the table. Go <laughs> sit in the bleachers. Great meeting you. Yeah, nice meeting you too. Big fan. Thank man. you. Thank you. I like that guy. You know what he used to do, Bob Einstein? He he would tell okay, he told that joke, which which got left in the show, obviously, because yeah. actually it moved the story along a little bit. Well, it also but, had the but, best reactions uh, ever from you guys. The, the funniest yeah. goddamn joke. <laughs> but, he, but I would do a scene with him, and in the scene, as we're filming, he would start telling a joke in the scene. And, and, and I'm letting him go on, but in my head I'm going, okay, okay, come on, come on. Because you know? right. I know I'm cutting it, yeah. but he would do it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> and everybody would laugh. Right. He, he was amazing. I think he's the single funniest person I've ever been around. He probably is. Yeah. He called in when Sal launched his podcast with us in the mid 2010s of the ringer. And he was like our fifth guest. Uh -huh. And he came in and just was immediately on the attack. <laughs> yeah. What is this? Is anyone going to listen to this? It yeah. was just, we were just dying. I don't know what it was. And then it was always like another joke. Another. And he would get serious for a second. Yeah. That reminds me. And then he would just go into the next thing. I bet you three listeners are eating right now. That other voice is one of the funniest guys I know. He's coming on as a favor and to insult me and Bill. And you know him from so many things, most recently HBO's Curb Your Enthusiasm, as Larry David's dear friend, Marty Funkhauser, Super Dave Osborne himself, Bob Einstein. Super, thanks for coming on. Sal and Billy, I love you both. And I was just telling you earlier, I, I just drove down the street. Just to test what the show was like, uh -huh. and I screamed out of the car, and uh, I felt what it's like to have a podcast because <laughs> there were three or four people who reacted. 